okay? Yeah. To start? Yeah. Okay, let's just start, right? Yeah. Uh, so welcome to the talk about uh, Drupal Europe that we did in 2018, and we're just going to share with you the learnings that we had, and actually hoping that we can maybe uh, do fewer mistakes and more of the stuff that we actually think that we managed to do good. Yeah. So I'm Patti, and uh, I was in the team, and two with me is... Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm Gabor. Uh, I was also on the team. Um, yeah. There are several others that will show towards the end of the slides. So um, question was, this the first, like, why did we do Drupal Europe? So there was a, um, a need because there was no DrupalCon in 2018. We felt actually very abandoned by uh, the Drupal Association, and that was a fact. So there was a lot of anger in the European community, and we had a lot of sessions, and this was one of the first ones Then we were sitting in Drupal Camp uh, Belgium. And we just said, like, why are we actually, why do we care? You know, why is it for us a big topic to do a camp, uh, con like that or a conference? And I think that um, the reason why the Drupal Association stopped doing it because they had a loss, but um, and that was just not a sustainable model for them. So we of course thought that uh, we could do that differently, and we were actually mostly. And I think that Gabor said that correctly is that we need to have this event so we can actually get people to contribute to the project. So if we don't do these events, we don't get contributors to contribute, and then we have difficulties. And especially in Europe, as uh, we are very proud of this next slide, which is 45% of Drupal contributors are from Europe. Uh, a lot of them, of course, also sponsored by companies that are not in Europe, but still it is an important fact. So therefore, important that uh, we have something like that where we can also meet, because not everybody can come to the United States to a conference. Yeah, so many of the Europeans were uh, concerned because they've seen that, okay, the DA makes money in the US, uh, but, but, but if you look at where Drupal is made, it's in a large part made in Europe. Uh, so we were like conflicted about the feeling that the conference is not gonna be held, but all, even though a big part of Drupal is made in Europe. So uh, what happened actually next is that we started to, you know, we had like, there were actually multiple groups that were forming. And in DrupalCon Vienna, that was a, a, a little bit tough also because there were more groups that wanted to do this together. So there was also like, we had to bring these groups together and make sure that everybody was on the same path. So that probably started there in DrupalCon Vienna. We joined this one and we put out the first Hello World post and, uh, and then, the, actually, the, what happened the next is that we got like the Hello World post, yes? That was, uh, there were three things that we said that would be important. One is that we want to bring together the community. That was like goal number one. Uh, number two, we want to make sure that Drupal stays as a really strong brand in Europe. And, and the third was that we actually want to show that we can do an event in Europe that is uh, sustainable and uh, that the cost will not, we will not be losing. So these were the three things that we were aiming at from the start. So this is probably what we sat down in the first uh, week and that we defined and put it out in a Hello World post. Yeah, in Vienna we had a lot of discussions of if, do, do we even need this event in terms of Europe because there's already Dev Days and there's already Front End United and there's a bunch of other events that attract a lot of people. And we came back to this realization that we need a place for the community to get together all together and to cross influence each other from businesses to developers to marketers to content editors to whoever is using Drupal and, and have this cross influence where like somebody comes in who are using your software and you can be proud of providing, of, uh, of, of building that software that they could make value with and they could provide you feedback how to improve what you're working on. Yeah, so uh, this was then in October, which was then we had a year. But uh, the first thing you need to do is of course to see like where can we actually have this event? And that is a really tricky part when it is only one year before the event. Because we knew that we had to find something that had more than, or space for at least 1,000 people. 
So we were always looking at up to 2,000. So finding an, uh, a venue for such a large event is nothing that is easy. So we first did like a call for venues. And we got a lot of submissions. Uh, some of them were more serious than others, and others were actually just putting in a name. So some of them followed with like an information. So this, this model was taken from the Dev Days, right? Yep. So there was a, there's always a question list in Dev Days that goes around because Dev Days and Front End United is uh, organized in a European level. So there is this list of things that uh, you should fill in, and then the community selects the the the, good, the best case or the one that fits the best. So we got all of these uh, venue submissions, and one we even got from Australia. Uh, like the Europeans know that Eurovision, the song context, uh, Australia is allowed to participate in that. So they thought that they would also be allowed to participate in DrupalCon Europe. Yeah, why not? So, but they were not selected. Uh, <laughs> so there were obviously, uh, um, we went really close into looking at even, uh, like venues in Germany, uh, Netherlands, and also in Scotland. Um, and Poland, probably these were those yeah. that we went into the big most detail. So those what we did, finalists. yeah, we did like a interview with them or we spoke to them. We got more information. We, we looked at the pros and cons and we made up a, a sheet where we could say, okay, how cheap is it for people to get there? How easy is it? How far is it from the airport? And we had to think about all these things. So this is also everything that we can share with all of you. But uh, I think the criteria there was also pretty, pretty good how that was set up. And yeah, that came from Dev Days. And we needed an event that could scale from maybe 1,000 people to maybe 2,000 people and like have the kinds of flexible room set up and stuff like that that could accommodate that. So we selected Darmstadt, which we thought that was amazing because the venue, if you, for those who came, you, you, you saw that the venue was just great. Uh, every single room had light. So you were always exposed to sunlight. And it was just generally probably one of the best conference venues that I've ever been to. Uh, pretty new. Uh, but there was obviously, a, of course, a reason why this venue was not booked in the week that we booked it. <laughs> and we didn't we, know that, though. <laughs> no, we didn't think about time. it. <laughs> so um, first, what we... What we heard is uh, that there was a lar the, one of the largest conferences that happened in Frankfurt. And Fra Darmstadt is only 20 minutes away from Frankfurt. So one of the largest conferences that happened in Europe almost takes place in the same week. So when we started, when we had already booked the venue, we were looking at, when we got this information, we started to look for hotels and we saw that there was just no hotel, like there was nothing available, Airbnb, or booking.com, it was just everything was full. So that's, that is definitely something that we will next time check. Like, why is the venue available in this week that you want to take it? What's the catch? Yeah. yeah. And it also had a conflict to pretty um, uh, important religious uh, holidays. So that also we didn't uh, think about. And uh, there came a lot of discussions and, and uh, around that. And of course, what we don't try to do the best out of it by moving around. So Dreesnode was, for example, on Wednesday. And we, we a little bit changed the program so we could at least, uh, because it was, the, it was the Monday that was the, the yep. cap. Yeah. Yep. That was really conflicting with, uh, with our holiday. So these are two things that we had with, uh, with that. So then came the next challenge. How do you actually organize something with a team of people that have never met? And we don't know each other that well. Or actually, we, we didn't even know each other before. Yeah. So there were, we were really organized. And I think that we, we, we did a lot of good things in organizational aspects. Uh, we had Jitsi. We decided on tools in the beginning. So we decided on using Jitsi for online meetings. That was okay. It was okay, yeah. At least it was for free, so we didn't have to pay for the service, but uh, it worked out okay. So we used Slack uh, for chatting. We set up really early on a Google Drive. We started by using Trello. Then we went to Open Social. 
And then we set up a project on open project, or we, that was a, um, something that we used and we set that up, but actually we didn't use that at all. We didn't use either of them at the end. So we were like moving from tool to tool in case we maybe find the right, the golden solution. But it, as a matter of fact, you will not, uh, I mean, volunteers who work on, if, um, at least in our event, the volunteers who worked on this event for their enjoyment, they did not enjoy updating project management tools with their status. That didn't happen. So that was hard. Uh, we used GitLab uh, for everything in relation to the uh, code of the website. Yep. And then we used Pretix for, we set up a Pretix, which is an open source, it's an open source uh, ticketing tool. And I think it saved us 30,000 let's just say dollars, because it's almost the same, uh, that we would have paid to, uh, for fees to other services so if we had used that. Like that yeah. yeah, so 30,000 was actually, it was, we, we looked at it in the end. And the good thing is we had one issue there and uh, there was the person who was behind this tool is in Germany, so that was even easier that we could actually just basically call him up and get help. But we, of course, had to set this up ourselves. So that also costs time. Uh, and then we used Stripe for payments. That was pretty good. Yeah. And for the ticketing tool, we also got with it an app. So when we did the registration, uh, we actually scanned the code. So that came all with it. So we can really recommend that tool. It was yeah. pretty, the reporting to see what has been done and sending out coupon codes and creating them was really easy. So when we had something, so that was a, a very good good choice. Yeah, so Pretix saved us a lot of money. The UI was nice. The, we could like have the, the ticket ticket selling part embedded on the page like any other. Com so there was no there was no limitations other uh, that other paid services would not have, and there was a lot of additional benefits like this check-in system and it being open source. Yeah. Okay, so how did we organize ourselves in teams? So that was also something that we had to learn the hard way almost because we started, of course, in a one large group and then we realized really early we have to start dividing the team into sub-teams. So we were really successful with these four branches, like we call it. So it was the, the web team, program team, volunteers, uh, lead team, and then the organizer team that were the main organizers and that had to maybe make the, uh, certain decisions at certain points. So we had also like single per person teams. So, or we were, we did that more, you know, ad hoc. So for sponsorships, financials, catering, venue, attendee care, communication, PR, that was just more done by one or two people that were also part of the other teams. Um, then we had the we meetings. So we did the, the weekly update meeting where we all just always met as, a, as a, you know, in every single team there was a weekly meeting, um, at least. Yep. So, and then we put all of our meeting notes into Google Drive, so it was like rolling meeting notes, so people could always, if they couldn't attend, they could actually go in there. And then what we also did, we used the, the, what the diversity and inclusion group does with making an online information, so you, like on Slack, so we made it in threads by saying like number one, here's our status regarding venue. So that's how we gave people information that didn't want to go and look into the, the weekly notes. And what was actually important is that we allowed and we encouraged always people to go to this weekly meeting. So if anybody wanted to join the team, then we told them to start going to these weekly meetings and then we gave them just an update, but in the web team and in, in those teams, they of course went into more detailed uh, stuff. Yeah, so this worked, this actually worked for status updates, unlike the, all the project management software. Um, and it also helped bond with the team, so we could like see each other face to face and we like created screenshots of the, the diverse team that was organizing the event. Uh, and, and as Betty said, we, so just to clarify, is that uh, for new volunteers who came in, we got them into the highest level meeting where everybody, every team was reporting their status. 
So they get to see the momentum going, like there's a lot of stuff happening and everybody's doing their things. So they could see like all the activity and have, first of all, have context of what's going on in general. And second of all, see that there's all this stuff happening and there's momentum and they are joining a team that, that has potential. Yeah. And then they, they, they could then find their own branch. You can call it like that. So um, what is actually regarding keynotes, we just wanted to give you a couple of insights on keynotes is that keynotes are hard because of the room size. So we want to have, uh, you know, you see this room here, you know, we don't have that many people in here, but we have in other rooms, we have a lot of people. And in the keynote room today, we had probably 4,000 people or 3,000 people. So how are you finding a venue that actually can do that? So that is hard. So what, what we did is it's a keynote room there. It's actually only half of it. So we had an opportunity to actually make the keynote much larger. So we could put it up to 1,400 people, I think. Yep. And in the setup like this, we had it only half. But that had, it, had to be decided like when we also knew how many were going to come. But we had that flexibility in this venue. That was what we liked about the venue. Um, and also like regarding the, the other rooms, they were smaller than the room that we are in now. So it was about 90 people, 100 people that could be in there. So in the end, we decided on purpose to keep the keynote room, even though we had 1,000 attendees still to keep it only for 700, which made like us fill up the room because there's always a lot of people that are just sleeping at home or listening to it online. So that made a really good feeling because you were really a part of something big in there and it was really close and every single seat was filled. Yeah, in terms of keynote content, we decided to not do an opening keynote and not do a closing keynote because like we could talk about like how much coffee was consumed and stuff, but there may not be interesting for, for most people. Uh, what we did instead is we wrote up a report that we'll link at the end that where we reported on everything that we did and like people can go back and read. And this allowed us to have space for more interesting content and like the more of the community to present themselves and what they are working on. Yeah. So in the search for keynote speakers, we went really, uh, we were really, we said that we want to talk about the open web. And that was something that we were passionate about. So we said that we want to have the founder of the WordPress project and the founder of the Drupal project to come to Drupal Europe and speak about the open web. And Matt from WordPress, he said yes to that. And we had, uh, everything was organized and, and we were really excited about having Matt and uh, Dries on the stage because they did that last time in 2014, I think. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, three weeks before, that was canceled by, the, by, by Matt for some other reasons. And that was pretty hard for us as a team, especially because we had been blasting his name on all channels. Um, what was good is that when we started to pro you know, promote that, we didn't see like a pike of people buying. We didn't see a lot of WordPress people buying tickets to come. So, so therefore it was okay. Um, but we got other great people, but they were a little bit more in the, the last three weeks, we were basically trying to get people to come on that panel, and that ended up really well. And yeah, we had a really good discussion. Yeah, I think we got very. I, I think we got the best people we we could have, even even if we would have a longer time. I think it yeah. went really well. So, and then the program, we also wanted to do something different there, and that was. So we, we really said that we want to have it more an industry vertical and use the tags, this tagging. So you say that I am a government session, it fits to government, and then you can say like, but it, like, it has a tag like migration and uh, accessibility and something else, which is maybe more the traditional tracks here. Uh, and by this, we could actually put people on it, like Christo who's here in the room, he was in charge of the government, so he was really chasing people to submit. So they asked, so in the end, like of course, everything was reviewed, like you review normally, but we had specialists in each track team, and they then tried to get people that would really well fit to it. So that was a really good success. That was a success. Yeah, so. this goes back to our focus on, the, on uh, protecting a Drupal brand or or it's on strengthening the Drupal brand in Europe that we wanted to like 
focus on the industries that are using Drupal to show the value that Drupal provides. And obviously, the Drupal and technology got the most submissions. So, uh, but, uh, but I think that still what, what, what happened then, we had for every page a landing page. So I know that Crystal, for example, he sent out to a lot of government people in Germany, hey, this is the, the program for government in Drupal Europe. So for them, they thought that, hey, well, there is something for us here, even though that the sessions were related to something uh, that was for a builder. Uh, and this is also something that is very normal to see, the, how, when the <laughs> submissions get. Yeah, we've had two yeah. deadlines, so you can see the two deadlines probably easily on the screen. When was the first deadline and the second deadline? Yeah, and how many did we get? 650 sessions yeah, maybe. in total? Yeah. So this was, uh, we had run, we were running eight parallel sessions per, uh, per each time, I think. So we had 170 speakers and 950 attendees, and in total, 233 sessions and buffs. So this slide is very empty because we tried to do trainings and it didn't work. And, and why is that? Is that we actually didn't have capacity to organize it, and we did it way too late. And when we then started to organize it, it was also a lot of extra work for us. So if you ever want to have a training at your camp, then you also have to keep in mind that it puts extra work on you as an organizer. So if you want to do that, you want to put a person dedicated on that because you need to promote the training, you need to make uh, uh, contracts with the people who are doing the training, you need to do some kind of a split on the, on the cost or the, how much revenue they are going to get. The uh, people attending the training need to understand that they would arrive earlier, or they would book their flights according yeah. to that, et cetera. Yeah, we did this half-hearted, so it didn't really work. No. We don't know if we would have put in more effort, if it would work better or not. Yeah. We don't know. So ticket sale, also uh, go briefly through that. We did all kinds of tickets, and maybe the, the one that we are most proud of, I think, of this list was, of course, the diversity tickets. So we teamed up with diversity tickets.org tickets uh, and we donated into that pool uh, X amount, to like I think 25 tickets. And then we promoted that and people then were, could uh, apply for a diversity ticket and they took care of approving that or not. So we were not part of that process. Uh, and then in the end we donated them uh, a little amount to, for their effort of doing it. So that was, and at, then, then your event also gets listed on the diversitytickets.org. Yeah, so it gives you more exposure, and there's no questions if you are partial to the people submitting or not. Yeah, and we kept the prices of the, the event in similar how it was in, in DrupalCon before, because we also had to start somewhere, and we just did it, decided to do it the same way. So here's also the ticket sale. Um, we, we talk about this also in the report, but the, we saw also peaks in the ticket sale depending on when we were uh, promoting the camp uh, or promoting the event at various camps. So we were giving out discount codes. Uh, maybe in, even in Nashville last year, there was a discount code for those who wanted to come. And so we, we analyzed a little bit how that went. But it was pretty, you know, it's always difficult because you need more tickets to be sold. So. That was a hard time to watch and count and all that. So financials, uh, okay, this is a little bit complicated slide because <laughs> it basically shows the line that is all the way in the bottom. This line that comes is the down payments for the venue. So this is the one, the target that we were always focusing on because uh, we had to have money because we did not have any money. <laughs> But we were lucky that the, the Drupal Association Germany, they uh, stood behind it. So that they were a legal entity behind it. So we see that the ticketing sale there, we knew that the total cost was always going to be there on top. Uh, sponsorship sale came in there and, um, and that was like a little, like you see, it, it worked out. So we never had any problems in the payments. And we, in the end, we don't know exactly how much profit we got, but we got profit, which is the most, uh, 
which came also together just in the end. We're like, probably going to know soon, as soon as the tax stuff goes through in Germany for last year. Yeah. Yeah, and we also want to put uh, a note, like, show that we also paid. There were there were like people part of the group that that were also like doing this full time, and we, you know, because we know that it cannot just be volunteering work and doing it in your free time in the evenings. So we were either sponsored by the entity or we were sponsored by our companies. So that was very important part of the success, I think, of the camp. Um, it's all in the report that we will share with you. So maybe a little bit to the, so we are just going really briefly through the report that you all have access to. But uh, these are the people who are part of the Lead volunteers, yeah. Yeah, the lead volunteers. And just our country, uh, it was just nice to see from how many different countries we were coming from. And then uh, this is most like the picture of like, I think the group that was volunteering in the end. Uh, there was a lot of, lot of people involved. Yeah, all of the registration desk and everything was, was, was um, done by volunteers. And yeah. And we also, regarding catering, I don't have a slide about that, but we have text about that. Uh, we decided to go for a vegetarian, vegan catering. Uh, we didn't talk about that much because, uh, you know, people are used to eating pasta and salad all the time. And uh, why do you have to put emphasis on that? We even got questions like, where is the vegetarian food? <laughs> so... Uh, but there was a lot of people that were talking about it, like, where is the meat? I need meat. Uh, but it went really good, and it was even cheaper for us to have that <laughs> than um, than having meat. Yeah, having more variety is is always hard because you have a lot of leftover food, and if you can if you can agree on some common denominator that would work for most people, it's cheaper to order a larger box of of the same type of food. Yeah, and if I can it give us food. a yeah yeah it was very good food, and if I can give us a little like thank you is that. We had coffee all day, so maybe that is a standard that we set for the future DrupalCons. Yep. <laughs> so here. when you now have coffee all day, you <laughs> think about like, oh, that's, you know, they couldn't do it because that was a very important part. And we also had water and even sparkling water, which is important in Germany, <laughs> also running all, all day. So we don't have much time, so communication, um, we're almost just finished. Uh, I just maybe, Gabor, you know, because he was in charge of our communication. Yeah, what we did on site is we did a we did a daily review meeting every day, and we reviewed what what went well and what went wrong on the day, so we could improve for the next day. And some of the teams were on site and improving constantly on things like the digital signage that we've had. We've been improving constantly every day. And as as I said, we didn't have an opening or closing keynote, so we were very active through the digital signage and through Twitter and other channels to uh, spread the messages. And that worked quite well. We could, uh, we could involve a lot of people and, and um, get uh, a lot and of And we spread. basically got access to the digital signage. So if you see the digital signage uh, things out here, so what we did is that they told us that we could send them what we want to display there. And we said like, no, can we send you an URL? So we sent them an URL and obviously, with the help of our great programmers in the team, developers, they created this amazing uh, thing that we just told them what URL on what screen, and then we were completely in charge of the, the signage. And that was one of the things that we got the most out of in the end that people said that that was uh, very helpful. So the full report is, I think, around 80 pages. Yeah. Uh, you can really go into detail. So uh, DevDays did this as well. Uh, it's really important for everybody who's organizing a camp, go and look at it because there's so much information in there about do's and don'ts and what went well and what was difficult. So uh, it, I made like bold the issue number, but otherwise just ask us. We even printed it out and gave it to the team afterwards. Um, just now, starting in uh, 15 minutes, is the buff around the event organizers, so please go there if you want to keep on having this conversation and how we can do that. Uh, it's going to be in room above three in the exhibit hall. And then, of course, uh, we didn't stop, so we are helping to 
the Kuoni, which is a professional event company who got the license for DrupalCon Amsterdam. Um, we are helping them to make sure that the event will be uh, for the community and for us. So that happen is happening in Amsterdam. So please, if you want to come there, come join us. And contribution sprints. Uh, another thing that we probably changed the naming from sprint to contribution. Uh, or at least initiated that. And please review us. Uh, we expect good reviews, right? Yeah. If you have questions, probably I think it would just be good that uh, I think the next session is starting. Uh, if you have questions, yeah. let's just have that conversation now. We are yep. always available yep. on Slack. So thank you. Thank you. Sure, water.